I'm Tim Richter. Yeah, when I first started in this business, I was barely 21 years old. Been there, done that, got my name on it. All I want to do is help lighten your load and give you some simple tips. The bottom line is, we're all technicians. I'm ready to rock now. Have you ever wondered why we go through all the necessary steps for the KAKU installation? Now, I know that everyone's been trained, whether it be by the video, hands-on, job aid, or even all three. However, many techs are still not using the techniques that have been trained. Why? Well, because a tech or two has told them that they could still get a strong signal, even if they were a few degrees off. Now, from my experience in my travels, I've been noticing that many of you are only completing half the tuning procedure for the KAKU ODU. What I want to do today is take a few minutes of your time to help you understand why we're doing what we're doing. Dither alignment. We're required as professional installers to perform this procedure on every KAKU ODU installation. So we all understand that dithering is a process of moving the azimuth left and right until you get the same meter reading before locking down the dish. But in the back of your mind, some of you may be asking, why? Why can't I just hook up the signal level meter, pick the dish, and call it done? After all, that's how I align every other ODU, right? Well, there's a very important reason why the standard peaking process won't work for the KAKU ODU. It has to do with the KA signal itself. The KA signal is very narrow compared to the KU signal, which of course is used for peaking. While the KU signal can show a peak signal strength across several degrees of azimuth, the KA signal can swing quite a bit within that same range. What we're doing in the simplest terms is gaining a direct bullseye on 101 so that we have optimal gain on both 99 and 103. If we go on either side of the 101 bullseye, we're simply gaining too much of one or the other. This will make the signal highly susceptible to both interference and rain fade, ultimately causing repeat service calls and some very unhappy customers. So what does this mean to the installer who tries to peak without the dithering? That means that you're only doing half the job, and at some point, either you or another tech is going to have to make the trip back out to correct your mistake. So let's do it right the first time. Now, some of you that are more experienced with the KAKU installation may have noticed that the DirecTV MPEG-4 receiver will still show an OK on the setup screen at 103 without dithering. Stop right there. That doesn't mean that you've correctly tuned the dish, which is still putting our customer at risk of a repeat service call. Think about this. What if you were just off two degrees on an alignment? That's about this much. By the time you get to the satellite, how far off do you think you'll be? 100 feet, 100 yards, 100 miles? Try nearly 800 miles. Well, 778 to be exact, but that's the distance between Los Angeles and Salt Lake City. So remember this. Today's mistakes will ultimately be our nightmare tomorrow. It's all about hitting the 101 bullseye. The only way to do that is to use the entire tuning process. One last important thing. Your install isn't complete until you've attached the BBC behind the receiver. If you don't, you might just have another repeat service call in your hands. So I want to thank you for your time today. I know it's very valuable. I'm Tim Richter, and I'll be seeing you out in the field.